We have just been witnesses once again of hypocrisy in the double standards of our American colleagues. That was Vasily Nebenzio, Russia's permanent representative to the United Nations, speaking through a translator at a UN Security Council meeting at UN headquarters in New York on Wednesday. His comments followed a U.S. veto of a resolution drafted by Brazil calling for what it termed humanitarian pauses in the conflict between Israel and Gaza, which would allow humanitarian aid deliveries to the Gaza Strip. This was the U.S. permanent representative, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, explaining the U.S. veto after the votes were tallied. Yes, resolutions are important. And yes, this council must speak out. But the actions we take must be informed by the facts on the ground and support direct diplomacy efforts that can save lives. The council needs to get this right. The 15-member council had initially been due to vote Monday on the Brazilian draft, but it was postponed for a day to allow more time for negotiations. The U.S. then pushed further for a delay as President Joe Biden was scheduled to visit Israel Wednesday. On that point, she said this. As we meet, President Biden is in the region. His trip is a clear demonstration of the fact that the United States is actively engaging at the highest levels to secure the release of hostages, to prevent the conflict from spreading, to stress the need to protect civilian lives, to address the humanitarian crisis facing Palestinians in Gaza, and to demonstrate to the Israeli people that the United States stands with them in their time of sorrow and need. We are on the ground doing the hard work of diplomacy. And while we recognize Brazil's desire to move this text forward, we believe we need to let that diplomacy play out especially when Secretary General Guterres, President Biden, Secretary Blinken, and regional actors are engaged in intensive dialogue on the very issues we are deliberating on today. The draft text urges Israel, without naming it, to rescind its order for Gaza civilians to move to the southern part of what is commonly referred to as the world's largest outdoor prison. Israel last week had ordered some 1.1 million people in Gaza, almost half the population, to move to the southern portion of the district as Tel Aviv prepares for a ground offensive in the latest round of fighting that has lasted since 2008 after Gaza residents elected Hamas to their government. That vote provoked a blockade by Israel of all goods and travel in and out of Gaza. The council also discussed at the request of the United Arab Emirates and Russia the bombing by Israel of the Anglican Baptist Hospital, which killed, according to surviving hospital officials, more than 800 civilians on Tuesday. Despite eyewitness, video, and rocket debris evidence that Israel was responsible, Tel Aviv blamed the bombing on Islamic Jihad. How is this being viewed around the world? Well, we begin by looking at Latin America and the Caribbean, And for that, we go to Nicaragua to speak with journalist Camila Escalante. Camila, what's it look like from there? It's pretty ugly looking at it, even from the United States, but I'm wondering what people are thinking around the region there. Well, I would say around Latin America, there are a lot of people who have historically uh, been in support of the Palestinian cause. It's something that is extremely common among all of the leftist organizations, the political parties. Uh, you know, obviously the socialist and communist parties, but all of the sort of workers' parties across Latin America, um, as well as a lot of key figures in governments um, and, and, you know, figures such as former president of Bolivia, Evo Morales. And so they've been extremely outspoken. We have seen some demonstrations in Latin America, uh, particularly in capitals, outside of the, you know, Zionist embassy protesting against uh, the continued violence and terrorism, uh, which is targeting Palestinians. And of course, um, that has continued since the beginning, nothing quite as large as what we've seen um, in other parts of the world. But there have been some calls made by people such as uh, President Gustavo Petro. Uh, He made the call, uh, well, he made the threat to potentially break 
uh, relations with Israel, and he ultimately did expel uh, the ambassador of Israel. Uh, but he also, uh, after making his threat, it seems that uh, that is the Israeli authorities said that they would be cutting security cooperation, which is to say that this is a country, Colombia, which continues to have major security uh, cooperation with the United States and Israel, something that's going to have to be undone. And there are plenty of other relations like that happening around the region. So these sorts of uh, these sorts of relations between countries of Latin America and Israel and the United States are ongoing, and that presents a threat to us. So then we also heard from Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro, who uh, on his weekly uh, Monday evening talk show, he uh, condemned the uh, the activities, the ongoing um, Zionist occupation and the terrorism which has been unleashed on the people of Gaza by uh, the Israeli occupation forces. And he has said that, um, you know, he has called on the world to put a stop to the genocide being carried out to the people of Gaza and Palestine. He has said that the, you know, the bombing has been permanent and that the world has to come together to do something about it. And we've heard things like that in the days since from many other Latin American leaders. But I think now, as you know, everyone is kind of looking over to uh, Brazil for one, because of course Brazil has the presidency of the UN Security Council for this month. And uh, unfortunately failed to get a resolution passed in that Security Council in order to get some sort of ceasefire or some sort of uh, break to the nonstop bombardment and killing and absolute massacre that's taking place there. On the one hand, the Brazilian PT, the Workers' Party of Lula da Silva, um, has put out a very strong position. They issued a resolution this week on the situation in, in Israel and Palestine, uh, condemning the Israeli uh, government for committing genocide against the population of Gaza and Palestine. And they've con they've always had that same uh, position. They've had uh, historic relations exclusively with the Palestinian Liberation uh, Organization. Um, but it seems like that and the fact that so many people in Brazil have uh, supported the, the Palestinians in their struggle has not actually translated up to the executive. So uh, Brazil has had, you know, sort of language in the Security Council resolution that they put forth, which is not necessarily pro-Palestinian or anything like that. Uh, they seem to want to be playing politics uh, to some degree in the Security Council, unfortunately, but they have a very huge role uh, representing Latin America and the world to try to bring some sort of ease to the situation that's going on right now as people continue to get slaughtered by the hundreds. And this is a problem, I think, that we see in a number of places, even in the Middle East, where the population wants they you know, have basically strong feelings of solidarity with the Palestinians and the governments are just not expressing that in policy. Kamal, thank you very much for your time, um, and uh, we look forward to speaking with you and Stephen again next week. Thank you, Don. Look forward to hearing from you next week as well. Thanks. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.